Hi, this is Heather Miller with the La Crosse Public Library. We're so glad you could join us today for our presentation for back to school budgeting. And we're so thankful for Heather Quackenboss and the UW Extension for leading this program for us. So we're looking forward to it. Ah, thank you, Heather. And thanks to the library for putting out so many cool programs so we can learn different things. And welcome to everyone at this presentation. And for those of you who are watching it later, thanks for watching and hopefully we get some good tips for how to get back to school this year. Now, honestly, back to school shopping has always been stressful. And this year it's a little different even still because we don't actually know what is really happening or what those plans are. We can kind of guess, but we're not always completely certain. So we're looking at what does school look like? Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that the best learning for kids is in person for that social and emotional learning. And at the same time with COVID going on, it's going to look different for our physical health too. So in La Crosse, there is a draft plan that is continuously ongoing and changing, but it looks like K through five is gonna to try to be in that traditional classroom but learning will, everyone will stay in the same room. There's individual supplies. There might be embedded technology. So if they do have to stay at home, they can know that technology when they get there. Grades six through 12 looks like it's gonna be blended. So they'll be online and face-to-face, -face, but in cohorts and small groups. So sometimes going to school and sometimes not. And then the other thing is there is an online option this year. So that's everything is at home with a district device and you do everything on that computer. So honestly, for each of us, school is going to look different. It might be sending our kids to school with some personal protective equipment. It might be being at home, hoping that our kids learn well online, maybe helping them, maybe trying to give them support, maybe trying to figure out what that looks like. And that might be completely online. Maybe we have kids that just love being online and, and do really well. So for all of us, it is really going to look a whole lot different. Now, normal years, the average cost per child for back to school shopping, last year was about $700. And I look at that and think, oh my goodness, $700. I had three kids last year. Did I really spend $2,100 on back to school shopping? And that answer is no. But when we look at it and break down, you know, you have the pencils and the notebooks and the folders and the, maybe the new backpack and different things like that. We also have a lot of clothing that goes in there. It's really nice to have that new outfit for back to school. This year, the estimate is about the same a little less but about six hundred dollars is what they're predicting most of us will spend on back to school shopping per kid now if you're like me i get really nervous when i see that and i'm thinking oh, there's no way i can or want to spend that much money on each of my kids for back to school so i broke down or i looked up and cnbc had this great graph of what we spent on back to school programming. And what you'll see is that clothing and accessories is usually the biggest chunk of our back to school shopping, you know, just across, across all of us. School supplies is at next. Electronic gadgets or computer hardware, those are up there. What we have new this year is personal hygiene products and desks or tables. If kids are going to be learning at home, they need a place to do that. And that might be our dining room table, or it might be, well, our kiddo doesn't do the best learning there, so we have to figure out what to do for that. And while schools have asked for Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer in the past, that's certainly going to be more this year. So when we look at different things, those clothes and accessories, the supplies, potentially the electronic, different things like calculators or computers or different hardware, this, is, this can seem like quite a bit. So what is new and different this year? Schools are going to be asking about face coverings, you know, whether we're on a bus or in a classroom, or maybe it's not in the classroom, but it's walking around in the hallways. So those face coverings are gonna be something that we're going to need to look at. Hand sanitizer, you know, when we can't wash our hands, it's 
not as effective as washing our hands, but hand sanitizer is going to help us be a little bit fewer germs with us. Individual supplies. A lot of classrooms in the past have had communal supplies. So if a kiddo couldn't bring crayons in or didn't have access to all of the things that was on the list, everyone shared everything. That's not going to be able to happen this year, so we're going to need to look at individual supplies. And then those antibacterial wipes. And honestly, sometimes when you find those in the grocery store or in the store right now, it's almost a little celebration because they are hard to come by. And I'm going to guess that we're going to need more as schools start. So the usual supplies, all of those things that we need for school in general, the paper, the scissors, the glue, the crayons, the markers, the calculators, the headphones, all of that stuff, honestly, can get pricey anyway. So when we look at how can we save some money on this stuff, there's a couple different ways to, to help our budget, our pocketbooks. What things from last year can be reused? Now I know my daughter, I have a teen daughter, she would love to have a new backpack every year. I just, just know it's not gonna happen. If your backpack's good, you can reuse it. So looking at what could be reused from last year, is it that backpack or that lunchbox or bag? Is it you know, your scissors? I know that's another thing that my son would love to have new scissors every year. And frankly, scissors gets lost in our house really easily, I'm not sure why. But scissors is something that could be reused unless the child's growing and their hands a bigger size or it's a different type of art class. Things like calculators and then all those unused supplies from last year. I don't know about you, but I always get at the end of the year uh, just a surplus of notebooks and loose leaf paper and pencils and pens that were never used. And so it's kind of saving those things from year to year is a nice thing to say, all right, what do we have? And being able to pull that out. And then in all honesty, sometimes it's what can we do within our friend groups or our neighborhood or with folks that we know from the school? Could we trade things? Like you need a fancy calculator for one algebra class in high school and then you're done with it. Could that move down to the next child that you have? Or could that go to a friend? Could you maybe have a group who share that calculator throughout the years? So working out some different trades like that can help our pocketbooks so we don't need to get all of those, those different things. Now, clothes. It's really nice to have that brand new outfit to go to school. But if you're anything like me, I used to get a new outfit for school, right? And it was always that fall outfit. So of course it was a sweater and jeans and boots and all of those clothes that work really well if it's maybe 50 degrees or below. The beginning of school is never that cold. And in all honesty, a lot of the things that we wore in the summer can really work through September, maybe even part of October. So when we're looking at clothes for school, which is usually that biggest part of the budget we use for school shopping, we can look at what could we do here. So what will your child, first of all, really actually wear? Because kids, sometimes you take them shopping and they'll say, yeah, because they're sick of shopping when you ask them if they like something and they're never going to wear it. So sometimes that means taking a step back from what we want our kids to look like and have say, all right, what are they really going to actually wear? And I had one, one child who never wore jeans, ever. And for some reason, I would always buy a pair of jeans at the beginning of the year, and he only wore comfortable pants. So I could have saved some money on those jeans. Looking at what you need right now, because your child grew and their pants are six inches too short, or maybe things are worn out. I mean, I've had duct taped shoes in my household quite a quite a number of times because well they still fit you can still kind of wear them so can we use them now maybe they're not good for gym class anymore and so running in gym class it might be a little dangerous what are some things that could be put on hold like a winter jacket that seriously does not get that cold right away in the season so could we wait on that winter jacket or if our kids are in some sort of sport and they need a certain kind of shoe or a certain shirt for that, is that sport later on? And we can actually put that on hold to 
to then plan that in a different paycheck rather than that one in August or September. And then also, are there those hand-me-downs? You know, kids sometimes, if, if it's new to them, it's a great thing. And hand-me-downs can be really fun from older kids or from our friends' kids or different folks that we know. And then, honestly, those end-of-the-season sales, right now as the fall stuff comes out in retail, all of those other things like swimming suits and shorts and t-shirts are actually going on sale. So maybe could we get a couple t-shirts that are a little bigger now for next year or next spring and then do that same thing in the winter, which is honestly about January with winter clothes. You'll still need them, but with retail being so much far forward than reality is, we could get some of those sales at good times. So school this year is going to be different. We're going to need to know and do and use more technology than we ever have. We're probably going to have to use and have more personal protective supplies. And we're going to have more hybrid learning. So that also means being more at home. So how do we prepare for what we don't know? What technology do we have available at home if we need that technology at home? Now, a lot of schools are going to offer different devices and make sure that kids have access to either a device or internet. Many 6th through 12th grade students do receive a device in the lacrosse area, and what they're looking at is in elementary school is what kids will get a device and how can we do that so they learn that. So we'll, we'll keep watching what happens there. You know, now again though, if we do need to share a device with work and school with mom or dad or a, a, an adult and a child, figuring that out is going to be pretty instrumental, particularly if we don't wanna purchase another device and knowing what the school can offer is going to be important too. Another thing that we're looking at is what will transportation possibly look like for me or my family? I know one of the recommendations that I've seen is we'd love for kids to be taken to school rather than on the school bus because of not getting all together in a clustered environment. So what does that do to our pocketbook? That might mean more gas. That might mean conforming our day a little differently so we can get them to school and work and do everything that we need to do. Does that mean maybe we can walk, but what does that look like? So just budgeting for that, either that time or that cost that might incur. What items can we skip? A school will be different. Now, oftentimes I remember seeing you need 40 pencils pre-sharpened to take to school. And I'm thinking 40 pencils, but frankly, by December, all of those pencils in the classroom disappear. It's, it's completely odd, but it happens every year in elementary school anyway. But if kids are using their own supplies, do they need 40 pencils or can they, you know, make it with just a few at a time? So maybe buying one small pack of pencils or with crayons and markers and all of those things. What does your kid prefer to use so you can say, all right, what can I really, you know, make sure I get? What can I do so that I don't have to buy the things that I know my child won't use, or I know that we won't be using in school because it's not possible anymore, or what am I willing to have them use at home? And then what do they need at home if it is a workspace, or is it a little cubby with their different things? In schools, they have all their places to keep things. And honestly, sometimes if we have things and no actual place for it, our house becomes a disaster zone, doesn't it? and there's papers and notebooks all over the place. So what might we need to have at home that will make it easier for all of us to clean that up and to keep it in one space so we don't lose those items? Because we know how we can lose a pen really easily. Kids are the same way, and they're going to also sometimes lose things. And then some general tips. What's expected this year because of COVID is more people are expected to shop later in the year when they know what's gonna happen with school, when they know, okay, I do need to have this stuff for school and this stuff for home. What that can do for the rest of us is it gives us more availability and selection of the items we might need. Retail's going to have those sales 
that they always have at the beginning of the school year, the notebooks that are much, much cheaper and inexpensive than they are every other time of the year, or the 10 cent folders, or the pencils that are a dollar per pack instead of $5 per pack. So sometimes when you do go to the stores and you see that back to school section, I know I tend to try to avoid it as long as possible. If I was being wise, I would go over and say, okay, what's on sale? Let me pick a couple things up on this grocery shopping trip so it doesn't add too much to my bill. And then maybe next time I can you know, get a couple other things. So looking at that now, as people are gonna shop later and we, we aren't sure what those sales will look like this year. Ideally, we buy a few things at a time all year round. Those folks who are really good at financial management and budgeting do this and they say, okay, when I see loose leaf paper and I know my child's gonna need loose leaf paper next year, I'm gonna buy some now, even if it's January or March. Now, frankly and realistically, we don't always think of that and we don't necessarily budget for it or make the time for it or we don't have the storage space in our house to do that. If you are able to buy a few things through the year that you know your kids will always need, it's a great idea. Now, it being July and school starting in some manner in either the end of July for those year-round school kids or in September or even, maybe even a little later for everyone else, that's not entirely as possible right now. Is that something that we can try to plan in the future? I try to say I'm going to do that every year and just to be completely vulnerable and honest, I am a last minute shopper. So I don't always do things the way that would be best. And then figuring out what we can spend before we actually spend it. So sitting down before we go shopping, before we take that school list and saying, all right, here's what's on the list and looking at, okay, what is absolutely needed what are my kids really going to use? And then prioritizing that and trying to stay within that, that budget. Now, the last thing I actually want to do, and I know this is a little bit off the budgeting finance topic, but honestly, this year is going to be different and maybe even a little harder. So no matter if we're doing school at home, doing a hybrid, being in one room all day, you know, homeschooling as it is, it's going to be a little bit different socially and emotionally, and our kids are gonna show us that. Now they're not gonna say, hey, I'm struggling with this. They're gonna react, they're gonna laugh out, they're gonna have behaviors that we don't like as parents. That's where we get to try to help them learn some good coping and emotional regulation. So what can we do after a day in school when they come home and have been in the same room with the same kids and you know that sometimes when we're with the same people every day, our friends get annoying. Even the people in class that we don't like get anno even more annoying. And so what could we do when they get home just as that ah, kind of moment? Or if we are doing things at home, what could we do for breaks? In school, there's recess and there's you know, uh, maybe a snack break or there's walking between the halls for different things. What could we do at home? For that? What could we do to assist in connecting with friends? Maybe that is, you know, hey, here's, here's my phone, here's how we can make a phone call to your friend, or the FaceTime, or the Skype, or whatever that social media is that you can use to connect with, with friends and help your kids connect with their friends. And then to teach those positive coping skills. And this might be something as easy as, hey, you know what, I'm going to add gum to the grocery list every week because I know if you chew gum, you can concentrate better. For some folks, that is a fact. Other kids, I know you don't want them to have gum because it'll end up in hair or different things like that, and that's fine. But looking at what do, do our kids really love and understand and like and what helps them calm down so we can offer that to them. And maybe that's something like a swing set. Maybe that is something like um, you know, gum, maybe that's a coloring book where they can just take a break and just dive into coloring something rather than having to think about things. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm going to share just a, a website for if you want any other help. This is the UW Extension or University of Wisconsin-Madison Division of Extension 
financial page. And on here, there are a whole bunch of different financial education pieces. So you can look at maybe resources to help get through COVID or different money matters or tax credits or different things that you want to learn. And some of those can be very, very helpful for you. So this will conclude the part of the program that's being recorded. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, you can certainly contact your local library for all kinds of resources or UW Extension in La Crosse County for different resources and questions too.